Hey everybody, it's Lon Seib, and I have an original Nintendo Switch that I bought the day it came out. In fact, this was the first device I reviewed as a full-time content creator. And over time, the little sticks on the Joy-Cons start to wear out. And one of the things that the Nintendo Switch Joy-Cons are plagued with right now are drifting issues where your character on screen will be moving around even though you're not touching the Joy-Con. And in many cases, it's because the uh, Joy-Con stick is actually defective and you have to get it repaired. Now, you can send these back to Nintendo and have them repair it for you for free. But if you wanted to fix it yourself, there's a lot of replacement parts out there. And the other day, I got sent this kit from a company called Gullikit. And they make a hall sensing stick replacement for the Nintendo Switch Joy-Cons. And I installed one here a little while ago. And Hall Effect sticks have the potential to be better than the original equipment because they rely upon magnets for tracking the position of the stick versus potentiometers and other things that can wear out on more traditional hardware, especially in small packages like this one. So over time, you're probably not going to see drift with this, and you'll also pick up better accuracy in the games that you're playing. And I'll show you some examples of this in a little bit. Now, before we jump into things, I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure that Gullikit sent us this pair of sticks to review here free of charge. All the opinions, though, you're about to hear are my own. No one is paying for this review, nor has anyone reviewed or approved what you're about to see before it was uploaded. So let's get into it now and see how these Hall Effect sticks work in my Nintendo Switch. Now, the price point on this is about $30 for the pair. On Amazon, it looks like they include all the tools that you need to get the job done, although my review unit here only had the two sticks in a box and nothing else. In fact, there wasn't even any instructions that came with it. But I found a great guide at ifixit.com that shows you how to do these replacements. And they take you step by step, both through a written out guide, but also a video. So if you're unsure about what you're getting into, definitely check that out first to make sure that you can handle the work here. The good news is there's no soldering required. And I'm not very handy, so I was surprised that it wasn't as hard as I thought it was going to be. Uh, so during a live stream, we did take apart my left Joy-Con here and replace the stick on it. The biggest challenge that I ran into was working with the little tiny ribbon cables that you have to remove and then put back in. But it only took me about an hour or so to get the whole thing put back together and functional. So I think anyone who's even slightly better at this than I am is going to be able to do this, I think, very, very quickly. And all in, it was a very easy process here that, again, did not require any soldering. One thing, though, that I would suggest is that you follow those iFixit instructions to the letter. And when you get in there, disconnect the battery as soon as possible so you don't accidentally short anything out and break your Joy-Con completely. Um, but overall, again, the process of installation was not bad. It looks pretty nice in here. Um, one thing that many Amazon reviewers have noted that I also have seen on this is a slight gap at the top of the stick. So it's possible some dust and stuff might get inside from that component. It looks as though the stick itself is completely sealed. So I don't think the dust would impact the stick's performance at all. Um, but there is a bit of a gap there, and the folks who make this indicated in responses to those reviews that they will be addressing that in a future iteration. But right now, you're going to see a little bit of a gap there at the top, but otherwise it fits in pretty nicely. The big difference that I found with the gullet kit stick here versus the stock stick is that the gullet kit stick is a little more slippery than the stock Nintendo one. So the stock Nintendo, of course, has a rubberized coating on it, as does the replacement stick here, but it's just, it doesn't grip as well. Um, so one of the things that I saw the Amazon kit includes is a little sticker that you can put on top of the stick to give it a little bit more of a grip. And you can apparently replace the stick top if you want with something else. So you do have the option to take that out and put another one on it if you're not happy with it. Now, after I completed the installation, there was a good amount of drift on the new controller, but that's because it has to be calibrated first before you can use it. So what you have to do is get the thing connected and then navigate over to the controllers and sensors portion of your system settings on your Switch and go over to calibrate control sticks. 
Now, mine is already calibrated, but we'll take a look and just see this, the sensitivity of it here. And just moving things a little bit will register on screen here. But I found the movement to be very, very smooth. It does snap back a little quicker than the stock Nintendo stick. It feels like it's got a little bit of a tighter spring on it. Um, but otherwise, I've really noticed a big difference in playing some games with it. And I'll show you a game in a minute that uh, makes use of the analog stick quite uh, significantly in its gameplay. And it just feels good. And I was very pleased with how it all felt and operated here. And as you can see, it is uh, going right back to center here and staying there. And how do we know this is really a Hall Effect stick? Well, I got a magnet here. And if I put the magnet close to it, you can see that that impacts the uh, position of the controller. So we are definitely using a magnet here to sense the position of the stick. So all in uh, a true Hall stick here for your Switch that uh, seems to be working quite accurately and feels very smooth too. Let's take a look though at a quick little game here and see how it performs in a real world test. Now this game is called Power Pros Baseball and the analog stick is really important to getting a good hit here. And you can see just how smooth everything is navigating here as I move the stick around and how quickly it jumps back to center uh, when I release it. I'm not doing very well here because I'm trying to talk and play the game at the same time. This is one that requires a little more concentration. Timing is very important here. Uh, but this was a game that I had originally played on the uh, original Joy-Con right when I got it the other day, and I noticed a big difference here with the uh, new hall sensing stick here that I installed yesterday. So all in, I am very pleased with how it feels. It does have a smoother, more accurate uh, feel to the gameplay, and I think the games that really rely on accuracy uh, like this one are going to play a heck of a lot better perhaps than it did before, especially if your stick was suffering from some of the drifting issues. So can't find much to complain about here. Uh, the installation process again was not completely easy, but not very difficult either. And I think it's something that is going to enhance your Switch experience, especially if you have an older one like mine. Now this is not for the Switch Lite. These are only at the moment for Joy-Con equipped regular Switches. But if you're having trouble with your Switch controls or you prefer a Hall Effect stick to the ones that come with your system, uh, these are definitely something that I have found to be quite nice. And again, the only gripe I've got here is that the stick feels a little more slippery than the stock stick but I think you could easily rectify that situation. So that's going to do it for this look at the Gullikit Hall Sensing Joystick for Joy-Con. And until next time, this is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters Brian Parker, Chris Allegretta, Hot Sauce and Video Games, Logic KGR, Tom Albrecht and Amda Brown. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.